Overall, my rating for this fork is probably a 6 out of 10. What is up, Hash Nation? Today we are talking about a hotly requested topic, and that is the Ethereum Constantinople hard fork that is due in mid-January, letting you know what you need to expect and if you need to do anything in preparation for this hard fork coming soon. So with that said, let's hash it out. As some of you may know, the Ethereum ecosystem is set to experience a hard fork between January 14th and 18th at a block height of 7,080,000. And this hard fork is composed of four relatively sizable Ethereum improvement proposals targeted at improving the Ethereum virtual machine and overall reducing the block reward and preparing for proof of stake coming as soon as they possibly can. And before we dive too deeply into the specifics, if you are wondering if you need to take any action for this hard fork in preparation, here's what you need to know. If you're just holding Ether and you're not running a full node and you're not a miner, you do not have to do anything. If your coins are on the exchange, you're fine. Most large exchanges have already addressed this concern for people and they are taking good care of your tokens. However, if you have them in a hardware wallet, leave them be, you don't have to do anything, wait this out and you'll be good to go. Now really quickly so that we're all on the same page, for those of you who don't know what a hard fork is or don't know what the concept of a hard fork is, I'm gonna explain it to you really quickly. Now for those of you who wanna know what a hard fork is, imagine this. You have a spreadsheet of all of your business expenses and revenues for the entire year. And that spreadsheet connects out to a piece of software on the web to help calculate all of the different taxes and net profits, net losses, etc., that you may have for your business expenses. And that software is really just a set of algorithms and rules that govern how that data on your spreadsheet is used. Now, if there is a change to those rules, a change to that software, you will have to update your spreadsheet to use the latest version of that software or your results will be different than those who are using the newest software. And in an environment where you have a choice whether or not to update, then what happens is you could have two versions of the same software running simultaneously with different rules and thus different results. So this is the same concept in essence of what happens on a blockchain network. Because there is no central authority to enforce or force you to change and update to the newest set of rules, it's really up to individual nodes on the network to decide whether or not they want to update. And that's why these proposals to improve Ethereum and improve a blockchain network are never simply just pushed out and done right away. Everyone has to agree, or at least a majority of people have to agree. So in essence, what a hard fork is, is it's when updates are proposed to improve or change the rules of the network or the way that the protocol works, then nodes have a choice. Do they wanna update and continue with the newest updates or do they want to stay running the old version of the code and not update at all? If a majority of people choose to update to the newest rules, then things continue as normal and the new rules are accepted and no chain split occurs. However, if it's hotly contested or there isn't a lot of consensus about whether or not these updates are good for the protocol, you can experience a chain split. And that's what happened way back in the day when Ethereum Classic and Ethereum as it is today split off of each other because the reaction of the change that was proposed in response to the DAO hack was really, really divisive. And so some people decided, no, we're not gonna do that, we're gonna stay, and that became Ethereum Classic because they didn't move over to the proposed fix for the DAO hack. And the new Ethereum network did roll back those transactions in response to the DAO hack, and that is the Ethereum network of today. So as you can see, it's not as simple as just pushing updates and everyone is forced to oblige and everyone is forced to make those updates. People have a choice. And so that is why a hard fork is necessary for certain protocol updates. Now I know that could have been a little long-winded and I do apologize if you already know what a hard fork is, always good to have a little bit of a review. All that said, let's talk about the specifics of what you can expect from this hard fork and really what its intention is in the Ethereum ecosystem. Now, first and foremost, and the reason why I support this fork is because a lot of work has been done to improve the Ethereum virtual machine, which is what essentially governs all the computation that occurs on the Ethereum network. So that is operations that occur on the blockchain itself, smart contract execution, other things like that 
very important and a crucial aspect to building dApps on Ethereum. As you guys know, I'm an Ethereum developer and I've definitely started using a lot of other protocols so I can kind of compare and contrast. And Ethereum's virtual machine definitely needs some work. The gas efficiency is definitely, definitely a barrier for people and it's been a barrier for me building applications with smart contracts. That said, in this Constantinople hard fork, there are several updates made to different opcodes, operations, and functions, and just overall efficiency improvements made to the Ethereum virtual machine across the gamut of smart contract execution and low-level processes, which is definitely a good thing for me and definitely a good thing for developers in general, and furthermore, a good thing for users who will then experience, hopefully, a better user experience using dApps on the blockchain. Essentially, a large proportion of these updates are targeted at making the blockchain for Ethereum more gas efficient and making the virtual machine better overall, which I am definitely stoked about. The second and more contentious part of this hard fork is something that miners are not super happy about. And I did do a video about this exact topic. I will link it in the YouTube card above so you can check it out. But essentially what is happening is it is doing two things. One, it's delaying the difficulty bomb. More on that in a second. And two, it is reducing the block generation reward for miners from three ether to two ether. And you may be wondering why this is happening. What it's trying to do is two things. One, it's trying to reduce the inflation of the Ethereum token overall. And second of all, it is to encourage the migration to proof of stake when Casper proof of stake is introduced in the Serenity protocol update that is hopefully, hopefully coming in 2019. Now that said, miners are not super happy about this because the profitability of mining has been definitely in question over the last year or so for Ethereum miners. And I definitely hear that criticism. Now the difficulty bomb that we were talking about before that was supposed to coincide with this was essentially a slow but sure increase in the overall difficulty of the proof of work puzzle that has to be solved by miners to generate a block and you may wonder why they're doing this. The Ethereum core developers want to make it so unprofitable to use proof of work on Ethereum that miners are incentivized to move over to proof of stake, where hopefully the profits are more plentiful and also where the network can improve in scalability because that is the hot topic on Ethereum. How can it scale and be better for developers going forward and better for users that wanna use the dApps on Ethereum. The difficulty bump and the reduction in block reward is hopefully going to disincentivize miners from resisting the move to proof of stake. However, I'm not convinced that this is gonna go off without a hitch. I'm not trying to spread FUD here, I'm not trying to scare anyone, but I do know that based on my last video, there are a lot of miners that are very upset with this idea because at the end of the day, these people do this for a career a lot of the times and they wanna make money and I understand that. So it's gonna to have to be something that's carefully, carefully planned and that the core development team for Ethereum delivers on their promise to make mining profitable with proof of stake. That is the absolute key to this whole thing. They have to deliver and they have to deliver relatively quickly to pay miners back for the compromise that they're gonna to have to make in the short term. So overall, is this a good thing or a bad thing? To me, it's a, overall a good thing, but that said, I'm a developer, not a miner. I'm not the one who stands to lose as this block reward goes down from three to two ether. And as the difficulty bomb is delayed, I wonder when is proof of stake actually going to come? How long am I going to be mining without the promise of a larger block reward? And those are questions that I don't have the answers to. Granted, in my last video about the block reward reduction, I did say that a decrease in the inflation of Ethereum could definitely combat the price issues that we've seen and potentially make Ether more valuable. So even though there are only two Ether being given for each block reward, it could be that the price is high enough that the economics make sense. I don't know and it's hard to say whether that will happen, but my fingers are crossed that that is the case. In my opinion, I think this short-term pain across the board for some miners is an unfortunate but necessary thing to prevent all-out war when Serenity and Proof of Stake comes in and hopefully prevent a chain split when that does occur because it will make perfect sense for all miners to move over to Proof of Stake. That's the idea, hopefully it works out that way. Overall, my rating for this fork is probably a six out of 10. 
I feel bad for minors. I think that this could be a larger problem than people are making it out to be in terms of the block reward reduction. But if, if they deliver on the Serenity protocol before the end of 2019 or close to 2020, like very close on the margin of 2019 and 2020, I think that things will be okay for Ethereum. I always like to err on the side of positivity because I think that's what we all need in this space. And I genuinely believe that Serenity is going to be the answer to Ethereum scalability in the long term. Proof of stake has its own question marks, proof of work has its own question marks, but I think proof of stake is gonna be better for Ethereum based on the scale and just the usability of the protocol right now. I'm stoked about the gas efficiency improvements. I'm stoked about the approach to the Ethereum virtual machine from a development perspective. So this hard fork has my support, but I understand where miners are coming from if they don't support this hard fork. Hopefully they understand that their compromise will be paid back in the long term. And that's what I'm gonna go with right now. So I guess I leave it to you. Question of the day. Let me know in the YouTube poll above if you think this hard fork is a positive sign for Ethereum, a negative sign, or if you're still undecided. I really wanna know what you guys think because at the end of the day, this is a community thing. Everyone's opinion counts and I'm genuinely curious what you think. And I must say, while it's extremely, extremely unlikely to happen in my book, there is a possibility that there could be a chain split at any time during any hard fork and to be prepared for that to happen, you need to make sure you're aware and you're keeping up with the news about this hard fork. If something happens that's unexpected, I will for sure create a video and let you guys know exactly what you have to do to be prepared in that instance. So definitely make sure you're subscribed to this channel, you have notifications turned on, and heck, make sure you let me know if you have any concerns because I try to answer every single comment so you guys can feel well informed and so that you guys can know that I genuinely care about you and what you have to say. I know how hard it is to develop these things. I know how hard it is for the Ethereum core development team and how hard they're working on making Serenity real and making these changes to the Ethereum protocol to help it stand up to some of the new proof of stake chains that are out there and just to make it scale a little bit better. However, we all have to understand that time is not always on the side of innovation and innovators for that matter. And they need to deliver on the promises that they've made or else Ethereum could be in trouble in the future. That is just the truth. And at the end of the day, you can never ever stop innovating, never stop pushing towards your vision. Miners will need to be repaid for the compromises that they've made throughout this process of bringing Ethereum to proof of stake and overhauling the Ethereum virtual machine. And beyond that, developers are also gonna have to be patient as things change drastically over the next year or two years and even beyond that as they have to migrate their dApps and other things and develop in a completely new paradigm as proof of stake comes into the fray. Patience pays off, but only if the Ethereum core development team can deliver on the promises that they've made about the Ethereum protocol's future in 2019 and beyond. I believe in Ethereum. I will continue to develop with Ethereum until it is no longer possible or forever if I possibly can. And I'm super happy and super stoked to be a part of this Ethereum journey for better or for worse. And guys, with that said, please do not forget to check out some of my other content on the channel. I'm super thankful and appreciative that you spend time here out of your day watching my content and hopefully learning new things. Thanks so much. Make sure to click on one of these videos or playlists on the screen now. Have a great one, guys. Cheers.